Dear viewers, greetings. This present video is about an introduction to atomic absorption spectroscopy. In short form, it is called as AAS. This video will cover the following contents. First, an introduction about atomic absorption spectroscopy, followed by history of atomic absorption spectroscopy, principle of atomic absorption spectroscopy, instrumentation of atomic absorption spectroscopy, and working procedure of atomic absorption spectroscopy. Atomic absorption spectroscopy. Atomic absorption spectroscopy or AAS is a powerful analytical technique used to determine the concentration of metal atoms or ions in the sample. Atomic absorption spectroscopy is used to determine the elemental composition of various substances and it relies on the absorption of light by atoms in a sample to provide an information about the elements present. Atomic absorption spectroscopy is the most powerful technique of analysis of elements. Approximately 70 elements can be analyzed by atomic absorption spectroscopy. History of atomic absorption spectroscopy. In 1802, the phenomenon of atomic absorption spectroscopy was first observed by Wollaston. In 1955, Alan Walsh from Australia showed that the atomic absorption spectroscopy can be used as an analytical tool. Principle of Atomic Absorption Spectroscopy Atomic absorption spectroscopy is based on the principle that each element absorbs light at a specific wavelength. The principle of atomic absorption spectroscopy is based on the absorption of light by free ground state atoms. When a sample is introduced into a flame or a graphite furnace, it vaporizes and forms free atoms. These atoms absorb light at specific wavelength, which is unique to each element. By measuring the amount of light absorbed, the concentration of the element in the sample can be determined. Instrumentation of Atomic Absorption Spectroscopy The Atomic Absorption Spectroscopy contains seven major parts. They are Radiation Source, Atomizer, Monochromator, Detector, Data Processing System or Readout Device, Nebulizer and finally Burner or Flame. The first part of the Atomic Absorption Spectroscopy is Radiation Source. The radiation source provides the specific wavelength of light required for the analysis of a particular element. Each element has its own characteristic absorption wavelength. There are two types of radiation source. The first type is hollow cathode lamp and the second type is electrodeless discharge lamp. The hollow cathode lamp is the most common radiation source. It consists of a cathode made of the element to be analyzed and a tungsten anode. When a voltage is applied, the cathode material is excited, emitting light at specific wavelength characteristic of the element. The electrodeless discharge lamp is used for elements that require a more intense light source. It generates light by exciting a gas-filled bulb using radio frequency or microwave radiation. The second part of the Atomic absorption spectroscopy is atomizer. The atomizer converts the samples like solid, liquid or gas into free atoms in a gaseous state that can absorb radiation. This is a key step for producing free atoms for measurement. There are four types of atomizer. The first type is flame atomizer. The second type is graphite furnace atomizer or electrothermal atomizer. The third type is hybrid generation system and the fourth type is cold vapor system. In the flame atomizer, the sample is aspired into a flame where it is atomized. Air acetylene or nitrous oxide acetylene flames are commonly used depending on the element being analyzed. Graphite furnace atomizer or electrothermal atomizer is a graphite tube 
used to atomize the sample by heating it to high temperature in a stepwise manner. This method allows greater sensitivity for trace element detection. The hybrid generation system is used for elements like arsenic, selenium, and antimony that can form volatile hydrides. The hydrides are then transported to a separate atomizer. Finally, the cold paper system is specifically used for mercury detection by converting mercury to its vapor form. The third part of the atomic absorption spectroscopy is monochromator. The monochromator isolates the specific wavelength of light that corresponds to the element being analyzed. It ensures that only the described absorption wavelength reaches the detector, thus improving measurement accuracy by eliminating interference from other wavelength. There are two components of monochromator. The first one is diffraction grating and the second one is slits. The diffraction grating is a device used to disperse light into its component wavelengths. The slit adjusts the bandwidth of light entering and leaving the monochromator. The fourth part of the atomic absorption spectroscopy is detector. Detectors measure the intensity of light after it has passed through the atomized sample. The difference in intensity before and after the sample gives the amount of light absorbed by the atoms in the sample, which is proportional to their concentration. There are two types of detectors. The first type is photomultiplier tube and the second type is photodiode array. The photomultiplier tube is commonly used detector in atomic absorption spectroscopy and it converts the light signal into an electrical signal which can be quantified. The photodiode array is used in some modern atomic absorption spectroscopy system for simultaneous multi-elemental analysis. The fifth part of the atomic absorption spectroscopy is data processing system or readout device. The data processing system converts the electrical signal from the detector into a readable form such as concentration units. Modern AIS instruments are equipped with computers and software for data processing, calibration and result interpretation. There are two components of data processing system. The first, comp the first component is analog to digital converter and the second component is software. The analog to digital converter or ADC converts the analog signal from the detector into a digital form. The software is used to analyze data, perform calibration and display the final concentration of the element in the sample. The sixth part of the atomic absorption spectroscopy is nebulizer. The nebulizer converts the liquid sample into a fine mist or aerosol which is then introduced into the flame or finance for atomization. The nebulizer ensures that the sample is evenly distributed in the atomizer. There are two types of nebulizer. First one is pneumatic nebulizer and the second one is ultrasonic nebulizer. The pneumatic nebulizer is most commonly used and it uses a high pressure stream of gas, usually air, to break the liquid into a small droplet. The ultrasonic nebulizer uses ultrasonic waves to break up the liquid into fine droplets and providing better efficiency and sensitivity. The seventh part of the atomic absorption spectroscopy is burner or flame. The burner or flame produces a flame where atomization occurs. The flame also helps to ensure that the sample remains in the atomized state long enough for proper absorption measurements. There are two types of common flames. The first type is air acetylene flame and the second type is nitrous oxide acetylene flame. The air acetylene flame is used for most elements and the nitrous oxide acetylene flame is used for elements with higher exiting energies such as aluminium or titanium. Finally, Working Procedure of Atomic Absorption Spectroscopy 
the sample either liquid or solid is atomized in either a flame or a graphite furnace the free atoms are then exposed to light typically produced by a hollow cathode lamp and undergo electronic transitions from the ground state to excited electronic states the light produced by the lamp is emitted from the excited atoms of the same element that is to be determined therefore the radiation energy corresponds directly to the wavelength absorbed by the atomized sample a monochromator is placed between the sample and the detector to reduce background interference from here the detector measures the intensity of the beam of light and converts it to absorption data dear viewers that's all about an introduction to atomic absorption spectroscopy thank you for your support thank you